What about genuine domestic violence? That actually involves a man or woman getting hurt by their partner. What about this battered woman there's so much talk about? Hmm, the mythical battered woman. We hear about her so often, yet encounter her barely at all. I think I've yet to meet a woman that could take a battering. Yet the terms battered woman and wife beater are put about very frequently. It seems either that women are exceptionally tough, such as the internal injuries and broken bones they sustain on a daily basis just don't show, or else maybe, just maybe, they're not actually being battered. I mean, this is a beating. This is both. He hit. strong elbows to the head. He's out. He's out. My goodness. This is a battering. He's got to be in. Really tough. This corner got to throw the towel in on this one. If poor women are enduring this every day at the hands of some evil husband or boyfriend, then hats off to them. They're tougher than any man I've ever seen or heard of. And according to this scaremongering campaign from Amnesty that we've been treated to on the London Underground, apparently these battered women are so tough that all it takes is a bit of makeup to cover up all that damage. How tough is that? Remarkable. My guess is that the words beaten and battered have very different meanings to hysterical females. compared with rational people. In Britain and the US, it's been thought that the batterings that these women receive leads to something called battered woman syndrome. The idea was first proposed by Lenore Walker, a feminist psychologist. The concept is that women who are abused go through several stages of behavior, which can then finally erupt into violence against the abuser. This eruption of violence from the woman is not a reaction in self-defense, but is a well-planned, lethal assault. In any other context, this is called premeditated murder, but not so with domestic violence. QC Helena Kennedy, MP Harriet Harman and others have tried to argue that there is some vital qualitative difference between females murdering males and vice versa. Kennedy argues that women experience... The argument in essence is that women kill for a good reason, whereas men kill because they're evil. This sort of twisted thinking is typical of women in our society. Women want to be treated the same as men, only until they see some advantage in claiming difference. Harriet Harman was trying to make a case out um, if it was the battered woman syndrome. I think uh, a woman wrote back in 1979 this thesis on a battered woman syndrome which stated there was a cycle of abuse that went on and on and then at a certain point when she couldn't take any more she didn't snap and kill her husband she would wait till he was asleep and then she'd kill him um, now I don't know how you view that but that that leaves lots of nasties in the air because how often could a woman kill her husband and then say well I suffered in silence for 10 or 15 years and then I decided to kill him to kill someone when they're asleep I, I always think it's a premeditated thing. To kill somebody either in self-defence or you finally snap and you get someone and you do it, or I, I can't imagine doing that sort of thing, but there's an element of, yeah, that could happen. Well, what Harriet Harmer was trying to do was to say that women that killed men in their sleep um, certainly wouldn't be murder and it might not even be manslaughter. Whereas if a, a man, because this was a male thing, okay, if he snapped and killed his wife, yes, that's murder. Where a man had snapped, they would take that partial defence away from him. So they, they'd put it in place for a woman that had bumped a bloke off in his sleep, but they would take the man having a final snap, they would actually remove that from him. So for men, that would mean more likelihood of conviction? Oh, yeah. of oh absolutely, yeah. That's the whole idea of it, yeah. Man convicted, woman let off. That's, that's Harriet Harmer's thinking. She doesn't like you, I'll tell you it would actually give women licence to murder men. You, you can't have a partial defence to murder that actually says a woman can kill a man claiming that she's had years of domestic violence and claiming that she had to do it in the middle of the night when he was asleep. That to me is murder. Poor innocent women are driven to the end of their tether by hateful abusive men. You don't even want to smell that stuff cooking. And they finally snap. But rather than an understandable human reaction in self-defense, she responds with calculation and planning. She waits for him to go to bed so that she can murder him while he sleeps. 
These murdering women are said to go through a stage of learned helplessness. They have become so demoralized by the violence of their husband or partner that they sink into a state of psychological paralysis and become unable to take any effective action to leave an abusive relationship. She can't pick up the phone and leverage the full weight of the state against her abuser, which most women could do. But she can successfully plan her revenge and execute premeditated murder while her husband sleeps, which most women couldn't do. Do you think it's um, justified as self-defence for a woman to kill a husband or boyfriend if she's been beaten by him in the past? I think that would certainly come into how it, how it pans out on the trial. It would be a mitigating circumstance, yes. Do you think that women should be allowed to commit premeditated murder in self-defence? No. Premeditated murder is, is murder. If, you, if you're controlled enough, to premeditate a murder because you've been abused, you're controlled enough to leave the man and get out of there. And if you choose not to and instead choose to kill <laughs> the abuser, then you had a choice. And in court, in fact, I was in a court case of, well, it wasn't a man and, and a woman, but it came down to was it self defense? And the basic question was could you have walked away? That's the basic question. If you could have walked away, then it wasn't self-defense. So, to bring that to, the, to, to this case of, of a woman suffering violence and, and then killing the man, could she have walked away? Well, yes. So then it wasn't self-defense. If a woman, or a man, because let's, let's switch around here, I'm, I'm, there are lots of men in, in, in abusive relationships. If it's easier, or rather, if it's easier in your mind to kill him than to leave him, there is something fundamentally wrong with you, <laughs> not with him. Uh, it's, it, that's, that's an awful, awful reason to, to justify murder. You can be locked in mentally. You, after all, when you've been abused for a long period of time, you can feel you have no other choice. You can feel that there's nothing you can do. However, women or men in those situations will not be able to think about getting somebody in to kill them because they would be so locked in they'll have no options open to them whatsoever it's, it, they're completely locked in there's nothing they can do if they're free enough and they're strong enough in their mind to come up with ways of killing that man <laughs> they're free and strong enough in their mind to come up with ways of leaving that man it's, it's ridiculous you also have to beg the question that given that you've got refugees all over the country and you've got helplines out for women all over the place and you've got police stuff, anything you want to look at, it's help is this way. Why does she not access that help? The concept of the battered woman has been effectively demolished by numerous studies that have been carried out according to the recognised rules of research, as opposed to feminist invention. The single most damning fact about battered woman syndrome is that basic scientific method wasn't followed. The simple rules of science that you learn in your first days of secondary school. Inexplicably, the responses of subjects were never recorded. So there's no way for anyone else to verify the study's data. The existence of battered woman syndrome is essentially pie in the sky. Yet it's been used to deny justice to murdered men and dress up vengeful women as victims. I mean, you've got some experts in methodology that actually went through her work and they just discredited it. They said even the women that she interviewed to support this cycle of abuse hadn't actually even killed a man. Of course, some women are genuinely beaten, sometimes to death, and so are men. And so are children. But have you ever heard of a battered child syndrome? Or a battered man syndrome? 